Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Links Live. Welcome to 2025, our first show of the year, and we've got a lot of great stuff for you. I'm Ryan Bukema, I'm the host of Easy Links Live. Today, today we're going to be looking at some of the cool features that were part of our Q4 release. So let's get started. The first one that we want to talk about today are some improvements that we have done in Automation Center. We've now provided the ability for you to be able to control the timing, like when your actual actions fire in Automation Center. This makes it a lot more personable, a lot more customizable for you and your agency. So let's hop into EasyLinks and let's have a look. So we're happy to introduce the ability for you to be able to control kind of the timing of when your automated uh, actions in Automation Center will fire off and execute once a, once a trigger has been reached. So in order to access this, this is all part of the setting. So you'd have to be an administrator inside of Automation Center to see this. If, if, if for some reason you come here and you're not able to see the settings area, then you might not be an administrator. There might be somebody else in your office who is. But if you have that permission, you are an admin, you'll see this other tab right here called Settings. Now, if you click on Settings, there's a couple of things in here, right? The very first thing that you'll be able to control is the day, kind of the, the type of, the date you would like your, your workflows and automations to actually be fired. And these are going to be your email and your text. So do you want those going out during the business days? And the business days are basically Monday through Friday. Calendar day means that regardless of it being uh, like a Saturday or a Sunday, those are going to fire off. Right, so, so that's a very big uh, distinction here, is that the business days are Monday through Friday, so that means your emails that get sent out of Automation Center and your text will only fire off during Monday through Friday. Now, if you don't mind that and you guys are open every day out of the week, then you might want to go ahead and select calendar day, and that would include weekends. The next thing that we give you guys the ability to control here for your email and your text, which go out to your customers, are going to be the time windows that they're going to execute from. Now, what I recommend, and I think a great way to do it is, you know, you can probably leave it from 9 to say, I think seven's a good time, 9 to 7 or 9 to 5 is more of a traditional period. But whatever your office feels comfortable with for your clients to be able to receive text message and emails, uh, you know, be sure to set that time for you. Now, you might want to move it to, say, for example, 7 o'clock. Because let's, let's think of it this way. A lot of your insureds, a lot of your customers are going to be getting home, getting off of work, and that's maybe when they're going to be checking emails. That's maybe when they're going to possibly be looking at text messages and wanting to respond. So it might be good to push them a little bit past the traditional 5 o'clock window. The next thing that we're able to do is you can disable automations on holiday. So normally this would be unchecked, but if you check this, that means that if uh, a trigger fires an automation center, then on the following holidays, like on New Year's Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas, the automations, those actions, the email and text will not go out, right? And they will wait for the next day to execute, the next business day. So that's really neat. That's a really cool thing to do, to be able to kind of pause the automations whenever holidays are in effect. And then finally, the last one that we allow you guys to, to kind of save here, and th this is a distinction. Up here, we have email and text, but down here, we have all of the other automated actions in Automation Center. And, and those things are going to include like creating a note or a task, creating folders, generating agency documents, generating client documents. Those are separate actions, and we keep them separate because they're more internal facing actions versus the email and text are external. Those are going to your customers. So the internal actions, you can also control those and you can have them fire just on business days, Monday through Friday, or calendar days, and that would include Saturday and Sunday. Next up, for those of you who attended AppliedNet back in 2024, you guys got a sneak peek at the brand new accounting payables overview screen. Now we've been continuing to improve on that since Applied Net. We're really happy that here with Q4, we're going to be releasing the accounting payables page for everybody. Now it's been a while since we've made some improvements in accounting, but our focus this year is to continue to make improvements and to bring accounting to be a little bit more in line with the rest of the system. So let's hop in and let's take a look at the cool new accounting payables overview. So with this release, we have our brand new accounting payables overview. We're really excited about all the cool enhancements that we've been able to provide. You know, originally, if you think back to the payables, you, you had your checks, you had your write-offs, right? But now we're going to be giving you guys a real 
kind of a holistic view of the payables at your agency. So this helps you guys understand where you stand from a payable standpoint without having to run any of the reports like you used to. It allows you to quickly compare carriers, producers, insureds. Uh, you can also look at the exact balances that people may owe for each one of your payees, and you can filter by payees. So let's get in and let's take a quick look at it. To access, of course, you click on payables. Payables is going to direct you right here to the brand new overview page. A lot of great information on here, a lot of really cool stuff. If you look right down here, we have the total payables. And then we break those down for you by the different types, billing company producer, insured. The percentage that you're seeing here is actually the percentage that this total makes up of this right here. All right, so that's really, really important. Another thing that we allow you to do here on the new payables page, which is cool, is that if you actually have branches, you can filter the actual information in your payables by the different branches if you want to. So that's one thing that you can do. We will go ahead and expand this branch section up here. So we can say by each branch, what each individual branch may owe from a total payable. So most of our payables are up at the very top, but we also have some of our other payables down below. Now, if you don't have branches, you won't see that filter. Everything on this page will be specific to your one location. So don't worry about that. Another thing I want to draw your attention to is right here where it says paid in full. Right, so this is really, really neat. The new paid in full feature, this allows you to look for basically your agency bill payables. And those will show up at the pay line items where the invoices need to be paid in full for your customers. So that's a really cool thing to be able to look at. Another neat thing if is if we actually come over here into the table, we can see our invoice counts. So for each one of these different billing companies, you know how many outstanding invoices are there? How many are agency bill? How many are direct bill? And if I want to, I can actually go into the details here and I can actually be able to pull up the actual invoices to see, hey, what are the invoices that make up that total payable for me? And another cool feature that we allow you to do here is to export this information to a CSV file if you want. So that's a really cool benefit. A lot of this information is amazing because now you don't have to run reports to get all this aggregated data. We're doing it for you right here on this new Payables Overview page, and we're really excited to be able to bring this out to everybody here uh, at EasyLinks for all of our accounting users. Finally, we've made some updates with our master certificate holders regarding the visibility of the holder remarks and customizing the asset entry at the holder level. So let's hop into the system and let's look at some of these cool enhancements we now have for master certs. So what's really neat about some of the enhancements we've made here is that when viewing the holders associated with certificate, you can now see a column that we've added here for the actual holder remarks. Now this is really important for examples, let's say you have certificate holders that have the exact same title. You wanna be able to know more information about them. So like which one is for location one, which one's for our location two, right? So we provide that information for you so that when you're typing up and you're adding in your holders, if you add those in as holder marks, those, dif those distinctions, you'll now be able to see them when working here. Real cool thing though is if, let's say your remarks happen to be really long, it doesn't matter, you can just click read more, we'll be able to show more or read less. But I would do wanna show is if we go in real quick, let's look at the ad holder, um, process real fast. And let's, let's add in another one of the exact same holders. So bank of the past. Okay. Put in our phone number. More. Now if we come over here to our certificate details, this is where you can actually specify the actual location we want. So we want to go with location one. Okay. And what's pulling here is this information right here, our subject of insurance, this is pulling directly from that policy. So if I look at the policy here, I mean, it's the exact same stuff. The stuff that I have listed here on the policy, for example, the subject of insurance, the amounts, the, the deductibles, everything is actually pulling and it, we're gonna be able to see the exact same stuff. We're gonna be able to see the coverage that's listed and we're gonna be able to see the actual amounts for it. And what's neat about this is maybe, for example, maybe bank, our bank here is not interested in the accounts receivable coverage. They're only interested in the pizza oven. That's fine. All you have to do is remove it if you wanted to add in an additional one, you can, right? And you can also then, right here, when you come to the holder remarks, type in those specific remarks which are gonna show up right here to differentiate these two. So if I come in here, say, to this building, I know it's the pizza oven. If I go into edit the holder, if I come over here to my details, notice that it's just the pizza oven. The accounts receivable isn't there. I already removed it and pulled it out. Another really cool thing here that we've done is that when you finally go over to review, 
All right, I want to review these things and I want to expand this out. What's neat now is that the information you're actually going to be able to see it here on the policy. So for example, when I come in here to look at, boom, my first one for Bank of the West, look at the remarks, it's listed here. The right coverage information is listed here. When I switch between the other one, the other one comes here and look, here's the other remarks, right? So remember again, we had shorter remarks here, but for the other one, we had a little bit longer remarks. All of that transitions over and you'll be able to see that in the preview before you generate all of these certificates for your insurance. Well, there you have it, our first EasyLinks Live of 2025, a few of the cool enhancements that we had here in our Q4 release. Really excited that everybody took some time out of their day to be able to look at some of these cool new features that we have, and we have a lot of really great stuff in store for you here in 2025, so be sure to tune back in. Until next time, we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.